Unit 5, Lesson 1, The Rise of Totalitarianism. Unit 5, Lesson 1, Vocabulary. The post-World War conditions following World War I, its conclusion in 1918. There were economic disruptions following World War I that led to unstable political conditions. There's a worldwide depression throughout the 1930s, not just in America, but literally around the entire world that provided opportunities for the rise of dictators in the Soviet Union, in Italy, in Germany, and Japan. The Treaty of Versailles, which was hailed as a breakthrough when it happened, but was primarily responsible for weakening most of the countries throughout Europe. And it helped Japan emerge as a world power after World War I, and as they conducted aggressive imperialistic policies throughout Asia, trying to conquer the Eastern Hemisphere. So how exactly did the Treaty of Versailles fail? Well, the peace settlement that ended World War I, the, PD, the Treaty of Versailles, it failed to provide a just and secure peace as promised. Uh, Japan was relegated to like secondary status as far as the Allies were concerned. Italy was in the midst of a general depression, an overall depression throughout the country. And because Germany was forced to pay reparations, Germany was forced to accept the blame for the war, they grew more and more resentful of the treaty, and they felt it was too harsh and, and too punitive. beginning with Joseph Stalin and the Soviet Union. Joseph Stalin helped continue the legacy forged by Vladimir Lenin after the Russian Revolution of trying to build a classless society where all participants were equal. This meant like state ownership and control of the means of production. The Soviet Union became a command economy. This was communism based on the theory by Karl Marx. Stalin was the leader of the Soviet Union from 1922 through 1953. After the death of revolutionary leader Vladimir Lenin, Stalin crushed his opponents to take control after Lenin's death, and he held absolute authority. Absolute authority meant that he could suppress anybody who didn't agree with his views, and anybody who offered resistance. Stalin helped bring the Soviet Union and their country to world power status on the world stage, but how he did so was by enforcing one of the most ruthless regimes in history. Under the complete and con total control of the government, Stalin hoped to initiate new economic policies in the Soviet Union, a process called collectivization where the country exported seized goods and gained enough capital to finance a massive industrialization drive to help revolutionize the Soviet workforce. This rapid industrialization was part of a five-year plan that Stalin introduced. But under his regime, you had the KGB, or secret police, that killed thousands of army officers and prominent Bolsheviks who opposed Stalin Anybody, anybody who opposed Stalin was either disappeared or killed and had all traces of their existence wiped away. Stalin internally, although they made a deal with Germany to get out of World War I, Stalin feared the growing threat that was Nazi Germany and Adolf Hitler. In his desire to purge or eliminate anyone who threatened his power, Stalin was responsible for the deaths of between 13 and 20 million of his own Soviet citizens. Millions more died of famine caused by his economic policies and the hardships they brought on. Stalin was famous for persecuting people based on their religious beliefs or their ethnicity and even using them as scapegoats to promote 
fear within the Soviet Union through the propaganda machine of the Red Army. This is Benito Mussolini, Il Duce of Italy, who was leader from 1922 through 1943. He was a fascist leader and dictator of Italy. So what exactly is fascism? Well, it's a part of totalitarian control. It's a form of extreme nationalism where the interests of the state are more important than an individual's rights. You accomplish this by maintaining a class system and private ownership of business that benefits the state over the individual. Some background on Benito Mussolini. So in 1915, he joined the Italian army during World War I. When the British and French promised Italy land, so they would switch sides from the central powers to the Allied side and help defeat the Ottoman Empire in Austria, Hungary, and Germany. After the war, the Treaty of Versailles was not kind to Italy because the countries involved in the Allies, the United States, Soviet Union, France, and Great Britain, they felt that Italy was capable of trying to play both sides again. Right? This forced others and Mussolini himself to become bitter and criticize the Italian government for accepting breadcrumbs, for accepting a pittance compared to the other allied countries involved in World War I, much the same as Adolf Hitler did with Germany's Weimar Republic. So shortly after the Treaty of Versailles was signed, Mussolini formed the Fascist Party in 1919 to oppose social class discrimination. And as part of that, he organized armed gangs called the Black Shirts. This was like a domestic terrorist group. They terrorized political opponents and helped spread the message of fascism throughout the country, gaining strength as they moved on. This continued for three years, culminating in October of 1922, when Mussolini seized power through the March on Rome. During this march, Mussolini controlled the media and used propaganda to gain support of the people, particularly with his message of believe, obey, and fight. After successfully grabbing power in October of 1922, Mussolini became known as Il Duce, the leader. Once Mussolini came to power, he formed that fascist government, where he centralized all the power in himself as leader, so he had total control of the social and economic and political life of all the Italians within the country, because he promised to bring about the next great Roman Empire, the next age of Roman supremacy throughout the world. His ambition was to restore the glory of Rome, beginning with imperialistic conquests in Africa, especially in North Africa, with the invasion of Ethiopia. And Mussolini was very quick to form an alliance with another fascist dictator growing in Europe, Adolf Hitler. And that brings us to Adolf Hitler in Germany. Adolf Hitler was de Fuhrer, or dictator, or leader of Germany from 1933 to 1945. And his political party was Nazism. What is Nazism? It's an extreme form of nationalism, aided primarily in this belief in the racial superiority of the Aryans, or as Hitler called them, the master race. And it's best exhibited by the violent hatred towards Jews and in which Hitler and Nazi Germans blamed Jews for all of Germany's problems. Hitler and Nazism both coupled together were able to rise to, in Germany because as a result of taking the blame for World War I, the German economy was in a depression. Many German citizens became attracted to Hitler's Nazi party because that rise of nationalism, because he made them feel proud to be Germans. So in 1923, Hitler attempts to overthrow Germany's existing government. The attempt failed horribly, 
and Hitler spends a year in prison for treason. During his brief prison stay, Hitler outlined his plans for taking over Germany in the book he wrote, Mein Kampf. As the worldwide depression hit in the 1930s, this is when Hitler saw an opportunity to take control, and by 1933, he was named Chancellor of Germany. Within a year, he took over as der Führer, or the leader, controlling every aspect of the government. The military, politics, education, elections, Hitler ran it all. So, the type of government Hitler formed was Nazism, under a dictatorship, his dictatorship. The inflation and depression weakened the democratic government in Germany and allowed the opportunity for someone like Hitler to rise to power. Germans believed the Western powers had no intention of using force to maintain the Treaty of Versailles. And so this made it much easier for Nazi Germans to begin their epic conquest of Europe. And what aided the extreme nationalism the Nazism, was this growing sense of anti-Semitism and persecution of the Jews. Hitler gave Germans a villain. Germans felt betrayed. Germans felt picked on by the rest of the world for having to accept blame for World War I. Well, those feelings of resentment, those feelings of hatred were boiling over for a decade. Hitler gave them an outlet for their frustrations a face to put to the manifestations of evil, and that face was members of the Jewish community. German occupation of nearby countries was incredibly aggressive from the get-go. In an effort to cleanse or purify those countries of all non-Aryan members, Hitler went so far as to explain his beliefs in his book Mein Kampf, which means my struggle, where he wanted to unite all German-speaking people under one grand, enormous, massive empire in Europe. And he wanted racial purity, racial purity um, to alleviate the, the inferior races, mainly Judaism and people of Slavic descent, uh, all non-whites like gypsies or people of mixed race descent, and people who had mental or physical disabilities. Hitler wanted to purge all of them from the German-speaking areas in Europe to create his beloved blonde hair, blue-eyed, Aryan master race. And that brings us to the Eastern Hemisphere and the reign of Emperor Hirohito, whose reign lasted from 1926 through 1989. Hirohito followed the tradition and chose a name for his reign after inheriting the throne after the death of his father, Yoshihito. His reign was called Showa, or Radiating Peace in English. However, despite the name, he began a military buildup with several attacks on the country China and a dream of Pacific domination. And so to do that, Hirohito sets up a militaristic government. So even though Japan was an imperial monarchy and they had an emperor in Hirohito, his desires to become a conquering nation throughout the Pacific and try to create a Pacific empire led them to allow the military to take over control of the government. Hirohito could not stand up to the powerful generals, but he was worshipped by the people who often fought in his name. So the people felt loyalty to the emperor Hirohito not the military leaders, yet the military leaders, like Hideki Tojo, they actually controlled the politics and the government and the military of Japan. Hideki Tojo oversaw the industrialization of Japan, leading to a drive for raw materials. And remember, how do you get raw materials? Well, through imperialism. So Japan invades Korea and Manchuria, which was twice the size of Texas and the rest of China, especially China along the coast, so they can block out Western trade partners like the United States from accessing the raw materials in China and control the raw materials for themselves. 
And throughout all of this action, the League of Nations set up after World War I, after the Treaty of Versailles, did nothing. They let Japan run wild throughout the Pacific. 